everyone first thanks for the uh, response that everyone's given me about uh, the new class I'll be teaching at EduVision in term four so I'm um, because of the the quite large response I've received I thought I'd make a quick video where I talk a little bit more about my teaching philosophy the way I teach and how that's going to align quite well with the way I see the future of uh, standardized testing going in uh, not only Australia but uh, in much of the Western world right because you always hear this term critical thinking coming up okay and the way I teach is very much centered around critical thinking okay because I, I'm a very critical thinker myself and I'll sort of use this article to show you how you could develop critical thinking skills in your children and try to explain how I do it within the context of a class because it's probably going to be quite different to to many coaching colleges and tutoring centers in the way they would approach it all right so we've got eight ways here think critically as a habit yeah that, that's really important all right well let's scroll down a bit all right research arg agrees this is very uh compelling in itself because you'll always hear research talked about when when people are arguing points the strongest students emerge from home supportive in the learning process and below we've listed a few ways parents can support students at home all right let's go think critically as a habit so this is something i really try to develop in my students all right so a big argument in society at the moment is uh, you know rote learning just memorizing things versus thinking critically all right thinking critically about the news yeah that's so important today because there's so much uh, fraudulent news out there uh, i had a really good student a couple of years ago i remember him very well uh, he was in year six at the time i was working with him uh, very diligently we were meeting quite often we were having one-to-one -one sessions he ended up getting a scholarship to a private school he was a very clever boy but I remember talking to him and saying, oh, so, you know, what do you read? And he said, oh, uh, my dad makes me read uh, the New York Times every day. And I explained to him, well, you want to be careful with that because uh, the New York Times is a very biased publication. And he was surprised by this. Right? Children are always surprised to find out that the media isn't completely objective. So I told him it was a good idea to read the New York Times and to also read another publication that presented uh, the same story from a possibly opposite perspective uh, there's actually a good website i found recently when i was teaching a lesson on media objectivity and the lack or the lack thereof which gives you links to to three articles on one new story all right i have one that is considered left-wing one that is considered centrist and one that is considered right-wing so um thinking critically about the news and developing thinking critically as a habit that's uh, something that has to be developed in children now i relate that to the tutoring culture specifically and the culture of selective school all right so the reason they're changing these tests is the elephant in the room is that most of the students getting into selective schools and oc classes they come from asian backgrounds uh, the vast majority of the students I've tutored over the last 10 years have come from an Asian background. I'll list them in the order of their ethnicity. Most of them would be Chinese, followed by Korean. Then I would come, I would say, Sri Lankan, then possibly Indian. Right? I've had uh, almost, almost no sort of Anglo or Caucasian students in that time. And even the ones that appear to, to look to be of European descent, uh, they generally will have an Asian mum or something, right? There's some reason why they're going to tutoring. All right. And while I've come to really appreciate you know, that culture that values education and diligence and hard work, uh, it's also often quite a confining culture that uh, even some parents on this group have contacted me and said, oh, they you know, sometimes wonder if the parents have their children's best interests at heart, you know, in sort of pushing them to study so much. So the thing within that is like, I think study is great, but you wanna make the study worthwhile. 
all right you don't just want to see study as the means to achieving an end such as getting into selective school or getting a high mark in your hsc of course you want those things right but uh, those should come naturally right those should come organically as a result of you being a smart person right being a critical thinker i think that's what would happen right you see that's what you also need to think of in a job context do you want to go to someone you know a teacher or a doctor or whatever field your lawyer who is only there to make money right that might mean they're pretty good at it sure but it's probably better to think you want to have a person who actually cares and will make the money naturally as a result of that right you know will be really good at their job uh, you know, really push themselves to do their best and help their clients the most they can. And they get rewarded naturally for that, all right? Which, uh, be, that's the way I try to approach teaching, right? I don't like to think of it in money terms or, you know, I'm just doing it for this amount of money. I like to do the work first, you know, work with the student. I've even had times where I've worked with students where I haven't seen them improving. And I've said to the parents, look, um, I, I, I might not be the best person for this child, you know. And they will say to me, no, no, th this child likes you, you know. Like, we understand, you know, that they, they are limited or whatever in what they can achieve. Uh, please keep working with him. I'll say him because this is one particular child I'm thinking of who was very poor at maths. And, uh, you know, I, I felt my skills were almost of no help. To him but uh, we got on really well you know we would talk about things and we you know we had a really nice relationship going he liked me he apparently didn't like to study apart from when he would see me so i thought in that context yeah that, that's all right then I'll, I'll do that as long as there's no misconception about uh, what's what's possible to be achieved here okay so so i think in the in these asian cultures a lot of the time education is just seen as a means to an end right? which isn't the best thing for a, a good student a bright student so i'll give you another example a student i have at the moment a year five student really bright student you know possibly one of the brightest i've ever had at that age and uh yeah yeah he got 18 out of 20 in oc reading which is uh, last year which is a huge mark i've seen many good kids who only got eight nine even less than that and he says to me during the lesson, he says, oh, I love these discussions that we have. And that really makes me feel good as a teacher because yeah, I'm discussing philosophy with him, politics, right? We will read a story that's an allegory and we will relate it to today's world, you know, and he'll come up with some ideas that I might not have thought of. And I'll be like, oh, that's, that's fantastic that you can see this. And I'm sort of able to guide him through the labyrinth that modern society is becoming because a lot of these children, uh, I'll give you an example of another student I have, another year five student, very, very smart as well, but really lacks social skills. So one lesson, well, even during the lesson, right, when he's in a class, uh, he will talk over girls, you know, I will ask a girl a question and he will just yell out the answer. And I've tried to explain to him, if you do that in society, in broader society, as an adult in particular, you get in a lot of trouble, right? You, you know, people are not happy with that type of behavior. And he'll sort of laugh about it and so on. So, you know, it's so one day I actually held him back after class. So this is kind of to give you an example of how as a teacher, you would, you sometimes have to go beyond, you know, what is expected. So my own time i held him back for half an hour all the other students left and i had a long in-depth talk with him and i told him you know i like you and you know you're very clever but this behavior is not good right? and it's going to hurt you in the end right? people are not going to like you and he gave a very typical response right he got upset you know he's on the verge of tears because uh, see i'm holding him back for half an hour in his class and i explained to him do you see if people see this that they feel you're just being forced to go to tutoring they're not going to want you to get opportunities that other children don't get that other children are not able to to access 
and uh, you know because he doesn't even realize that he is smarter because of the tutoring it's helped expand his his knowledge so yeah try tried to help him in that way but he's he needs to become more of a critical thinker he's the good example of a student who is very very smart has a great memory you know knows lots of words can do maths really quickly but um he's not applying those patterns to the broader world which is something i'm trying to teach students to do so yeah practicing critical thinking all right uh debate everything this is a very good point number two debate everything i think this is one of the first things i tell all of my clever students uh even what i tell them right think about it first think about it does it make sense what i've told you if you want to question it question it all right don't just accept what i tell you and you know we can debate it you know it's my job to convince you that you know my point is valid right so yeah that you know and some students will really take that advice to heart which is great to see and you know i'll give them examples like remember people thought that the the earth was flat once right so there we possibly at the moment hold many misconceptions about uh the world and uh, the laws of the universe and so on and so it's all right to question those things all right and you would still look at current evidence you would say okay current evidence dictates this but you should still question things all right this is a really important one provide access to diverse quality reading materials i think this is something many parents from asian backgrounds struggle to provide their children with and it's something i love to do with my students all right so i'll give you an example of some texts that I will I'll name one uh flowers for algernon uh not a text that a primary school student would normally encounter uh but an absolute classic one of my favorite stories uh, i give an edited version of that to my students uh the girls in particular you know being tending to be a bit more mature at a younger age oh, they they tend to love this story right they really feel empathy for charlie gordon the protagonist of the story and uh, the story addresses many of the current uh problems within society you know intel uh, iq intelligence versus emotional intelligence and then we do a writing task on it right and uh, yeah that that's a story that uh children will will think about for a long time after they've read it i think and i try and provide uh, that sort of thought provoking literature because that's where your critical thinking is going to come from right so i'll give you another example of i had a really good student uh, as a scholarship student he got a a scholarship to to a private high school prestigious private high school and we did stories by this certain author we did quite a lot of them i really liked this author and uh he also grew to like him a lot right and so one day he was like oh these stories are so great you know where you know i'm going to go and buy more of them and you know and then and, I, and he did he bought the book right and he was talking about the author and i i sort of asked him off the cuff i said oh do you realize that author was gay you know did you did, did you know that he was gay at a time when he, he had to hide it you know it wasn't wasn't very popular then and this student you could tell was not even able to hide that you know that thought upset him that the author was gay and i i had to explain to him then that you know you're just doing then if you're sort of being prejudiced against someone like that you're just being the same as a racist right you're you're a sexist you are saying i don't like this person because of this right now a lot of these problems are uh they stem from cultural background right which again is not for me to judge i don't judge it uh i understand a lot of cultures are conservative and so on but the broader society that these children are going to be going into right and that parents want these children to succeed in means you have to be seen to be tolerant of issues like this so yeah i've even had students tell me oh my parents would be very angry about reading this certain text and i would hope i'd be able to convince the parents of the value of reading diverse texts because yeah the broader society uh, dictates that children need to be aware of that 
All right, practice claim evidence reasoning. So when you make a claim, uh, ask for the evidence. So yeah, that's a good habit to use. Yeah, learning from everything. This is really important again. So I relate this again to questions I see on the forum, on the Facebook group. People are always asking, what book can I do? Or, you know, what? And see, to a critical thinker, those questions, are, they, they seem silly. I don't mean to offend anyone, but yeah, they seem silly, all right? Because uh, any book can be a resource, right? It's like I put a writing topic up recently and someone, oh, is this a selective writing topic? See, if you were to actually say that to someone who's uh, a judging intelligence, they'll say, oh, it's not a very smart thing to say, right? It's like you're rote learning. Oh, this is this, this is this, this is this, right? Any question can be uh, a good one, right? And and any question, you should question both sides of it, or right? you should be prepared to argue both sides of it. So learning from everything. So you would find in my own teaching, I will use things like comic books, right? Because I know when I learned from them as a child, these are really valuable. You know, you will learn a lot from this. And children are really engaged by them as well. So yeah, learn from everything. You know, the classroom, what happens in the classroom? You know, when the boy talks over the girl, I explain to him, that will get you in a lot of trouble in society. Children have trouble uh, conceiving of that. All of the actions they take, I will try and correlate them to an adult context or a real world context to give them an idea of where they're heading. All right, play games here. Yeah, you can see from by things that I post uh, on the Facebook group, I do a lot of word games and so on. Uh, I even use their love of video games. I do one topic involving Minecraft where I have a good graphic novel on it. Uh, so yeah, the game style I find with children who are getting ready for things like Selective and OC, they tend to be quite competitive. So th those things work quite well. Like one of the activities I recently put up, yeah, that was one of my best students was asking for that one. He was like, oh, can we do the one where we have to do the, the really long words, right? And then I have some other variant where it's like you, you start one, you use one word, and the last letter of that word has to be the first letter of the next word, and it has to be increasing by one letter in length and so on. So underpinning even the word games I play, I use maths, right? I, I, I show how I can use a system to solve things, all right? So there's a method of rote learning even within critical thinking. So like the example I put up the other day with the prefix and suffixes, you know, I had D8. I would go through that very systematically. I would say, okay, let me put uh, uh, A after the D, deactivate. All right, then I'd go to B, debate. I put that word C, decorate, D, dedicate, E. Well, that's a bit harder, D, E. I'd have to think about that one. Uh, D, F would do a funny one, perhaps. Defecate, right? Some of the children will know what that means. Uh, go with defenestrate, which means to throw someone out of a window. Uh, DEG, degenerate. Uh, DEH, dehydrate. Okay. DEI, well, that's a, what, what did we, did, did, did anyone come up with a DEI one? D, could it be D, yeah, I'll have to have a think of that one. Someone can post in the comments about DEI. But you see, that's how I would do it really quickly. All right, J would be a hard one, K would be a hard one. DEL would delegate, right? DEM would demonstrate. So you can go through something like that in a systematic way using maths. All right, I think the reason why I'm pretty good at English and uh, you know, I have a good vocabulary and, and I'm able to write things quite well is I use systems, systematic thinking, which is a part of critical thinking, right? I've somehow figured out, oh, that's the quickest way to do this. You know, like I can go through this quickly. And children will often mistake that. Or, you know, my students will often say, oh, you have a photographic memory. You know, you can remember. It's not true, right? I forget uh, a lot of new words that I see. Like there was one when I recently came across when I did an online test that I can't remember. Now, I can remember it was to do with charity, but I can't remember the word, right? It was a really obscure spelling. But um, I would use some system to try and, you know, sort the information in my brain the best way I could. All right, make critical thinking a game. So yeah, I, I already do that. You know, I would, um, I do activities where I, I sort of show 
a satirical article and a real article and we compare them and we sort of say how can we tell which one is real and so on yeah i can't stress enough the importance of critical thinking teach critical thinking as a mindset yeah so this I think will be my greatest asset as a teacher that I just stress this. All of these concepts mentioned in here, uh, no one ever had to tell me about them, right? I know this is the way you should be thinking. So I don't think it's, you know, necessarily bad that parents are always saying, what book should I do? What, you know, what course should I do? I saw another post on the group about, you know, what resources should I use? Your most important resource here is a mentor for your child, right? Someone you can trust, uh, someone who can help them navigate this dynamic world they're entering into. And then it's got to have a, a sort of a, a level of reciprocity to it, right? Like the mentor has to be willing to listen to what the pupil is saying, right? And, uh, you know, give them feedback, value what they're saying. All right, like I sometimes find children can come up with very interesting uh, views on things because they're not as prejudiced as adults. Right? And that leads to some very interesting discussions. Right? Like when, you know, for example, I will do a topic on why do we have laws, which is very relevant at the moment because of the push to, to do things like defund the police. And you can see when children see a reality of a world where there's no laws, uh, it wouldn't be good for them at all, right? So, you know, when they're thinking of, oh, my parents are not nice to me and they make me go to, you know, tutoring and they make me go to school and they make me do all this homework. And I explain to them, yeah, you traded some of your freedom for the security your parents are offering you because without your parents to offer you that security, uh, you will quickly succumb to the state of nature. Right, where everything reverts to its natural state and uh, yeah, children being weak by definition, uh, not going to thrive in that sort of environment at all. And then they come to understand it and perhaps even have an appreciation for uh, you know, be, having discipline and having rules. I, I know in my own experience, right, when I'm saying to use critical thinking as a mindset, I still make sure that children know I'm the one in control. Right? Like they can question it, sure, but I would hope to prove to them that I am what I call a benevolent dictator. Right? I have their best interests at heart. I tell them what to do. They follow that. It'll work out well for them. Right? My hope is that they'll eventually you know, choose to follow me of their own volition, not just because their parents are telling them to go to the arbitrary tutoring. Right, so this is a big thing I see on this forum when you know, and I'm getting messages from people when they're where they're saying to me, you know, what book should I do? What course should I do? I actually think a lot of that is, it's irrelevant, right? You need to find someone for your child who can facilitate and expedite their critical thinking skills, and uh, without pushing the point too strongly, uh, I feel that's my greater strength as a teacher that I'm able to do that. And I've even advised some parents that I communicate with in the group. I see they are critical thinkers and they understand what is going on uh, in broader society. I think I would advise them they don't necessarily need to go to tutoring. You know, they can, they can help their children themselves. I mean, I still have some skills that uh, most people might not possess in terms of my sort of quick processing speed that can facilitate, you know, learning of, of methods to, to solve maths problems and so on. But I think what I would really want a child to do with that is not just rote learn those methods from me, but then also start thinking about their own methods. So I had one student, I remember he went on to James Bruce as well, that, um, you know, he would see how quickly I could do things, you know, calculating, and it impressed him greatly. And so then he would come in and start telling me, his own mathematical proofs that he had been thinking about at home. And yeah, that, that's the sort of thinking you want to see. That someone's not just doing something for the sake of it, that they're actually exploring these realms of knowledge uh, to expand their own knowledge. So explore the benefits of critical thinking. Yeah, I think this is the sort of, um, it's an inherent uh, truth 
do it. But a critical thinker will soon realize the value of critical thinking and you'll just absorb it. You won't need to be told that critical thinking is good. Uh, again, to bring that point, so the student who, who said he loved the discussions we had, he then did name another tutoring center that I won't name. And he said, oh, all we do there is do, you know, three times three or something over and over and over. And I said to him, well, there's value in that. You know, there's value in uh, rote learning something because that's the value of, you know, intuition versus real real knowledge. You want to intuitively know what three times three is, right? You don't want to actually think about it. But then there's so many other issues that you need to think about and that if you rely on purely intuition to solve, you're not going to come to the correct answer. In fact, there's a lot of research that shows that intuition is 95% of the time wrong. Okay, so sorry for the length of this post, but yes, I'm having a bit of uh, trouble sort of explaining to, to parents who are asking me about this course uh, that I'm going to be teaching, you know, what do I teach and how do I teach? So I'll just, I'll summarize a little bit more. I will, in the course that I'm doing in term four, I will teach uh, all of the areas of the test, all right? Um, it's not going to be sort of like this amount of time on this and this amount of that. It'll all sort of be integrated, all right? You might not even be able to tell what I'm teaching at a certain time. We might be discussing the vocabulary in a text and I might relate that to both comprehension and general ability. We might read a test, an, uh, a text, an Isaac Asimov text that relates to mathematics. This is the way I like to teach, all right? Not just to say, all right, we're doing this today and this is how you do this and, you know, memorize that because that's never going to work. All right? Like even in something like identifying patterns in general ability, uh, they're always going to change those patterns, right? I see in some of the ones that people post to the group, right? We do tend to see the generic, you know, the square numbers and the prime numbers and the, you know, going up in groups of two and so on. But uh, that's not critical thinking, is it? Eventually, critical thinking is seeing a new pattern and figuring out the rule for it. So I was recently making some resources for teaching general ability and I was going over some patterns like, uh, and I got into like things like cube numbers and so on. And I was thinking back to when I was a child and I thought, you know, I don't think I ever would have learned uh, these concepts. I certainly wouldn't have learned, say, the Fibonacci sequence, but I would have figured out what was going on by looking at the pattern. You know, I would have said, oh, I see that gap is going up uh, by the number before it, right? And that would be critical thinking identifying a pattern without ever having been made aware of it in the past. So how can you develop that? Yeah, look at lots of patterns, uh, see how the patterns are made, see how they correlate to other contexts. So for example, I had another student who when she went for a scholarship test somewhere, and she was a Chinese girl, and I asked her, you know, what was, what was the makeup of the other girls going there? There were 20 girls there. Uh, were many of them Asian, I asked her, and she said, no, no, not many, only about 16 of them. And I laughed at her answer, and I said, well, 16 out of 20, that's 80%. That's a lot that doesn't correlate to broader society, you know, where Asian people might be 5% or 10%. And she'd never thought of it that way, right, because she's used to going to tests where it's all Asian kids and so on. So a critical thinker would then start to think, yeah, why? Why is it all Asian kids at this test? Why am I even thinking that 16 out of 20 isn't many, right? Which doesn't mean you have to think that it's wrong. Of course, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. But you would say, well, why? Why is it happening? And then you start to think about the differences in the culture, all right? Because if we don't think about that, that's what leads to the, the sort of racism you're starting to see, all right? The problems when... People just say something's wrong, right? Like people are saying going to tutoring's wrong. Whereas I think if people were to, these people, the naysayers of tutoring, if they were to see me actually teach, I don't think they'd like to admit it, but I, I think they would sort of have to know that I'm not teaching rote learning. I'm teaching critical thinking. All right, so sorry for the length of this. Um, I really hope you, you, 
been able to listen to this and get the idea of what my teaching philosophy is. And I hope that'll help you uh, sort of come to the resolution that I might be a good person to help your child.